Hi, my name is Andrea Leonard. I'm the president and founder of the Cancer Exercise Training Institute. And I wanted to talk to you today about prostate cancer. My father had prostate cancer, bladder cancer, and myodysplastic disease. Um, I lost him about six years ago, but I want to, in his honor, um, talk about this and hopefully help other people who may be struggling following uh, the various prostate cancer surgeries. So there is a difference uh, when somebody has a radical retropubic prostatectomy. There are two different procedures that are typically done. And one is retropubic, where the incision is in the lower abdomen, and the other is perineal, which is between the anus and the scrotum. Now, either of these procedures can be done laparoscopically, which of course will result in less blood loss, a quicker recovery time, and usually less pain because they're going through several small incisions versus open surgery, which is your, your typical open surgical incision. But following an abdominal procedure, the retropubic, oftentimes there may be scar tissue or even adhesions that will draw someone into that forward flexed position at the waist. The last thing they should be doing is anything like a crunch that is going to shorten those muscles and bring them into that forward position even more. It's critical that they strengthen their lower back and stretch their abdominal area until they can stand up straight. So they can absolutely be doing core work, but until they're standing erect with good posture, they should not do any type of crunches or anything else that's going to put them in that shortened position. Now, if they had the perineal prostatectomy, they should be working on their pelvic floor muscles and doing Kegel type exercises and be very careful of any type of high impact activity within the first three months after surgery. They should also avoid riding an exercise bike for the first three months after surgery. Then it's important to start and progress slowly. So anything with the lower body, you want to start with body weight exercises particularly if it's a squat or a lunge, anything that's going to put pressure on that pelvic floor. Start with just body weight, a few repetitions, and then gradually add more repetitions and you can slowly add resistance. But if they've had lymph nodes removed or irradiated in their pelvic area, they are going to be at risk for lower extremity lymphedema. What this means is that they could have swelling in either leg either foot, any of the toes, uh, in the, even in their abdominal or pelvic area. And that, that risk is a lifetime risk. So if they've had radiation or lymph nodes removed, they have the risk of lymphedema. So if that's the case, it's critical to start and progress slowly because we don't know what their new body can tolerate. And if we do too much, too fast, that could in fact increase the risk of lymphedema. It'll also be critical to perform lymphatic drainage exercises to promote lymphatic flow throughout the lower body, which of course is gonna start by opening up the lymphatic pathways in the upper body. So if you would like to learn more, please visit us at ceti.teachable.com for information on our coursework. Or if you just wanna learn more about cancer, go to thecancerspecialist.com.